comes to us, he reaches outside. When we're alone, he comes alongside. He is with you. So consistent of God's nature. Verse 29. But he answered his father saying this. Look. Oh, you see, he's, he's really upset. The, the Greek word, ido, look, is probably stands for the Hebrew, hine, behold. Very upset, frustrated, angry. Look at this. All these years I've been slaving for you, and I never disobeyed your orders. But you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, well, let's stop there. Very upset. I, all these years, I have the Greek word dulio, dulio, which means, can mean servant or a slave in bondage. I slaved for you. Perhaps resentment. People do things, they, sometimes people do good things, but then they expect the thank you or the reward, and they're mad that they didn't get it. Sometimes that might be us. But if you did it for God, your reward is from God. If you did it for another reason, you don't have any reward anyway. If you did it, well, they didn't thank me. Nobody ever showed. Well, it's nice that people do, but if you're doing it for that, if you're doing it, then you are in trouble anyway because you're not doing it for God. It means nothing. I never broke any of your commandments. Sounds kind of like a perfect guy. When people talk about themselves, they generally sound good. But there's nothing perfect here. His heart isn't right. Notice he's doing the will of the Father, but without the heart of the Father. In other words, that translates to legalism. Pharisees which is as the ones Messiah is speaking this parable to. If you look at the beginning, you'll see it. The beginning of this chapter, it says the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around Yeshua, Jesus. But the Pharisees and teachers of the law muttered, the man welcomes sinners and eats with them. You understand what's happening here? Messiah is using the older brother to represent them. And he's using the younger brother, or, or the younger brother to represent the tax collectors and prostitutes and all the rest. And the sinner saved by grace. But here it is. Here the, here the, the older brother represent the ones who did it, did the right thing, but it was on the outside. They missed the heart of it. And the spirit wasn't there, even though the outward act was. People who use, it happens in the body. People who use God's word, but they don't have any of the heart of God. That brings death to judge, to condemn for pride and self-righteousness brings death. It has no spirit of God. It's the letter without the spirit. In the name of love, people kill each other. In the name of holiness, they condemn each other. In the name of God, we are to condemn sin, but we're to love the sinner. And speaking here as if he's perfect, as if he doesn't need any grace, as if he doesn't need any forgiveness, he doesn't need the Father's heart of love. He's the one who kept everything, so he earned it all. He kept the letter. He doesn't, he's not a sinner. He doesn't need mercy. Beware of getting full with yourself. That you think, hey, I've been doing good for a week, so hey, I can start judging again. If, as if you don't need God's grace. These are da that's dangerous things. That's dangerous ways. People who think that they're righteous on their own, they don't think they need grace. Even in the Lord, they can judge. You don't, you're saying, I don't need mercy. It says, judge not lest you be judged. Throw stones at the one who's without sin. If you think you're without sin, you will sin. And you are in sin. Judge and you will be judged. I knew a guy who was judging everybody. He wasn't a believer, but he was judging every, critical of everybody. And one day he got caught in a deep sin. It was exposed. He'd done it years back. Now he got caught. All of a sudden he became the nicest, most humble guy in the world because he, could, he didn't judge anybody because he knew he needed mercy. We're often the same. It's like that. It's like the servant who, who is forgiven everything by the king, but then has the other guy thrown in jail for what he is owed. That's the way we are often the same. We judge and then we mess up, and then we get humble again. We don't judge. Then we feel okay, and then we start judging again. Don't cast the stone. Notice what the brother reveals about the spirit of legalism. The focus is me, self. It's not the father. The focus is I did. I did this. I slaved. And you never gave me, me, me. The focus is that, because if I'm doing everything, and I'm earning everything, and I'm doing everything right before God, I think, and I deserve his love, then it's all me. The glory goes to me, because I'm the one who earned it. God didn't give me any favors, you understand? So if you think God loves you because you're doing good, you're the same thing. Focus on self. Yeah, I didn't break the commandment, but not from love. I did it because I had my other motives to do it. I'm still wrapped up in myself. People have formulas, you know, do this and you go to heaven or do this and you'll get money from God. That's a formula. That's not, that's, that becomes legalism. 
It's not a relationship. It's mechanical. If you work to get something and you earn it, you don't, you don't, you're not blessed in loving your boss. You earned it. The boss could have been nothing, could have been a machine. You got it. In the same way in God, when you do and you, you, I did it, now I get this, there's no relationship. There's no owing of love. I was talking to a Jewish person, Orthodox Jewish person. They had a problem with the idea of grace as the New Testament because they, they said it's not holy. Okay, you can do whatever you want. That's what you're telling me. You can just sin, do whatever you want, and then ask God at the end and get your forgiveness and then sin again. I said, no, it's the opposite. I said, what you're saying, what you're the one who's saying to be focused on yourself. Because you're saying you did this and you earned this. There's no, you don't need God for that. You're focused on your works. No one did you a favor. There was no mercy. There was no love. It all came from you. But the, it's the opposite. In God, it's the opposite. The fact that God loves me, the fact that God gave it to me and I didn't deserve it, and yet, and therefore, it wants me, it makes me want to do good for God. It makes me want to repent. It says that the grace of God is what leads us to repentance. It, give, it makes me have the heart of God. The love of God comes into me when I realize I don't deserve anything, and he gave it to me. The love of God starts changing me, and I become like him. That's what grace is. That's what it is. And the same thing is no different from the Muslim who's trusts in the Sharia. He kept the Muslim law. What's that? You don't need God. The Hindu who works karma, he, he thinks he did, he did. It's, it, people think that Eastern thing is easy. It's hyper works. Not only do you work in this, in this lifetime, you work every lifetime forever until you get demoted or, or whatever the case is, or, or exalted. How many believers live by really what they're doing? You feel good because of what you're doing. They're standing, and God is based on how you're doing. It's the difference between the older son and the prodigal son. The one believes he earned everything the, and cannot see the father's heart. The younger one knows he messed up in everything, deserves nothing, so all he can see is the father's heart. The focus of the parable, though, is really not on the son, it's the father. It's about, it's about focusing on his love. That's what it's about. One son gets it in the end, the other one misses it. So much of faith that's called Christianity is focused on us, which is natural, but it's not God. Even prosperity teachings, do this, you get that. That's how you relate to an ATM machine, but not to your father. You don't cause God to love you. God's love.